see that for yourself. And remember, when we do a UV cut, we can put a hard edge on that cut. Now I'm going to put a hard edge, but it's very redundant to have a hard edge and a UV seam next to each other uh, at the same edge, I mean. So right now there's a UV seam, which means we can make to a hard edge, but then we still have a baffle next to it, which makes it very redundant. So we don't need both. So now, just take this. Make that a little bit tighter, the baffle. Let's do the same here. So what we can say now is we take that whole baffle. We change that baffle not be a baffle actually let's not collapse that let's do it like that keep the shape a little bit better so now you can see we have that uv seam we got rid of the baffle but now if we look at it the shading is messed up again that's because it got rid of the hard edge now if we do hard edge here again, the shading is going to be looking correct. Over here we still have a little issue, again, not all hard edges. So now instead of using that bevel that we had earlier to fix the shading, we use a hard edge. It's going to save some polygons to not have it everywhere. Don't exactly like the shading here, we get some gradient. So we shouldn't have merged the corners up like that. So we can just put a cut in. Then like that. Now that's gonna be looking better. Let's bring some shape again. Now we got rid of that black gradient. Do the same here. And again, the, the more times you do stuff like this, the easier and faster it becomes to recognize what looks good and what looks bad and how to fix it. So this is all looking good to me now. We don't need all these edges here. We can just collapse. I'm triangulating this by hand to be like this. I want to make sure that the triangulation doesn't go like that in the engine. So it's going to cause some issues. So when you have some part where triangulation is very important to go a certain way, do it by hand. Here we don't need to do it. So for example, it doesn't matter how the triangulation is going to go, it's going to be the same. It's not going to cause any issues. And for cleanliness sake, I'm just going to push that right to the center. Do the same here. Push that right to the middle. And we don't need this, we don't need that, and we don't need this. And now you could think I can push this up here to uh, save a little bit more triangles. But save that one polygon, I prefer to have uh, more even out spaced triangles, which can help the shading. It's just like that. That kind of depends on the project. If your poly count is very, very important and you have to save every single polygon, you can do it like that. You just have it a little bit less clean. But speaking about modern games, it, it isn't really the case anymore that every single polygon matters so don't worry too much about not optimizing the poly count as much as you can now it's gonna be the annoying part 
we have to merge these together you see in the high everything fits nicely so we can make it fit nicely over here i'm actually gonna go back what i did with that hole i'm gonna close that up and hit the g key to repeat and take these edges and just delete them Over here, I want to get rid of this bevel. So, again, I'm collapsing one of those so we can select the whole loop. Just collapse that. So, this is looking very bad right now, but that's okay. So, now we can delete this. Just gonna fix that shading. Pull this straight. I'm just gonna hold down V to match it exactly to there. Pull this straight, match it. I'm just matching it to this vertex so everything's nice and clean. So now over here, I'm gonna pull this one straight as well. it down a little bit push straight push this down a little bit so it's intersecting same here i'm just gonna push it until it intersects now let's turn on the polycon the wireframe I mean so actually we need to extend that to here I think that one is good like that so like that okay let's push this straight This technique is a little bit uh, annoying to do. I use it all the time when I model. I'm just gonna merge, uh, hold down V, and match that to that point right there. Do the same here. But what we can do right now, it's very simple. We take our, our cut tool. We can literally just cut out the shape right here. Initially, this might have looked like a very challenging task. But you can see we can just basically trace it. Anyone can do this. Like a kid's job. It's like uh, when you used to make drawings. You'd have a very pretty drawing. And you put one paper sheet over it. And then you place it on the window. And then you just trace it. Basically what we're doing, but then in 3D. So it's very easy it's very effective so then we need to repeat what we did on the top it's very important that we pull this straight before we do it so the shading is gonna be nice so we're gonna get pretty funky looking topology but if we have pretty funky topology on a flat plane it's not gonna cause any shading issues now we only need this, connect that up, let's make sure we don't have any n-gons, you always want to triangulate to the point where the triangle is going to be the last least stretched so then we can take this this delete now mesh combine 
delete the history. Now we just need to merge that up together. So we can select that, try to get as many vertices out of the selection. Just gonna cause issues. See, we actually missed a few points there. It's okay. First, let's merge vertices. Kind of make sure that you're not merging anything else on accident. So that all looks good. So let's go over those holes that we have. So we can just merge that vertex up there. Put a new edge, new edge and target weld. So the easiest way to make sure everything's merged up, just do a smooth mesh preview by holding down three. See if you get any holes. This is supposed to be the debug mode, the vertex phase. I feel like it's very uh, difficult to read and I never end up using it. I just use the smooth mesh preview to debug. So that all looks correct. Cool thing is we get a hard edge automatically here because we merged it up. So that's what we need for the shading. Now you can see everything looks pretty good. So got some more stuff that we don't need here. Start merging some of this up. Gonna be careful with the triangulation there. Gonna keep this one for the triangulation. Gonna make safe because it's very painful if we have to do this again. Pull that straight. Get our high in here and kind of see where we need to put this edge exactly. Maybe we could take all these now. Right. can see where we need to place them. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is matching. A little bit difficult to see. not gonna worry too much it's a very small detail that we're not really gonna see anyway but the thing that I put in Maya to retop it's a little bit too low left to do let's do a final pass on those uvs just gonna take that all mapping plane mapping go to the low select the hard edges do a cut and unfold layout you can see how the uvs basically do themselves seem to have a little bit of an issue here maybe I don't like how that's all one island. I'll take that one, just do a cut. Now I'm doing that. Because for this UV, we're not gonna see it. It's gonna be behind the mask. So we can scale this down, right? So we can save some UV space. Let's move this back to Google Too Low Group. Seems we lost the group. Now let's 
let's place that right there. Let's also make sure this is exactly on the zero. So it is. All we need to do is mesh. merge correctly just hit the tree I'm just gonna do it like that just first soften and then move and so just gonna unfold everything again make sure everything's working correctly which it does that's all looking correct and make safe I think that looks pretty good. Still save a little bit of poly count if we go here, collapse. And collapse. This doesn't seem like a very important step, but after collapsing, just take all those edges, make sure it's looking nice, straight. So that's just a little bit for presentation wise, when people now see your model, it's gonna look way more professional if everything's just nice and straight, opposed to having some wobble in it. This doesn't look as nice as this. It just takes a second and it really pushes your model. You can also go ahead and collapse that. Don't think we had any height. everything straight instead of collapsing you can target weld again it's 3d we can do every single thing in a thousand different ways it's just up to what you prefer sometimes you gotta be careful that it doesn't get rid of the hard edges and then probably messed up the uvs nope triangles a little bit more space you can see he, here how I'm re-triangulating to make sure the triangles that we have are gonna be a little bit less stretched let's put those in again I'm just putting them in because I don't want the engine to do them like that actually maybe it's a very tight triangle but I think it's better because it kind of fixes the shading that we have going on over there. So sometimes stretch triangles can be a little bit better in certain scenarios. But as a general rule of thumb, try to avoid stretched triangles. Again, on the interior, we can pretty much just merge everything together, right? Again, this one we cannot really merge up because the triangles can be super stretched. I 
triangulation in there by hand to show consistency. And do the same here, put that triangle in by hand for consistency. Because this is a very inconsistent triangle, which I just don't like. Okay, so right now this piece looks very nice. Shading is proper. So we can go to the next one, which is gonna be the glasses. And this one. So to get this one back, we do re apologize something like this, just a pain. And because I lost the low, we can go to a high, and a copy, uh, paste. Let's delete, delete, and delete, delete, hidden. Let's see if we can rebuild. Crash our ZBrush. Let's do that again. So let's give that another shot. Copy. Paste. Delete. This time let's click the button a little bit more careful. It's already being a little bit strange. So I think this one is going to be the best one. So I'm just going to export that one. Let's import. Again, I'm using my plugins to do this really fast. If you don't have a plugin to export between the two programs, definitely get one. I think this one is symmetrical as well. Let's check that out. This. So for this one, it's going to be the one that's in the inside. We hide the first one. You can see you're not really going to be seeing that too much. So let's save a little bit on poly count. We can collapse. I think we can do this one as well. Go ahead and make this one live. So now we can go mesh and conform. We're just gonna snap it to the surface. So here what you can see that we get some pretty ugly shading. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to baffle that again, but this time giving it a little bit more distance. Mesh, conform. So now if we look to the shading, this looks better. Then we still have a black edge here, but we can just say harden edge. Now the shading looks okay. We can harden that edge without a problem. Because we need to put a UV scene here anyway. So we can just take that hard edge and cut it. And just unfold it. Again, this shape, you can totally use it. Because it's metal, you can get away with a little bit of stretching. If we take a look to the low group. Because this is going to be pretty hidden anyway in here. I prefer to just take this one and do a cut. If we lay this out, we can save a little bit of texture space, I think. So we can straighten UVs, just have that all be nice and straight. Also, because this is hidden here, one thing that we can do is uh, turn that one on. See this one we can optimize it a little bit. We can just collapse that. I'm gonna pull this 
trait. It's important to have surface light on or a live surface. This is going to optimize it a little bit. Let's see if it's looking good to me. I'm going to push that to goggles too low. Check out the density of polygons, that's more or less the same. So this all feels pretty even. So now all that's left is the goggles themselves. And again we had that we have this one that we could use. And maybe I'll actually just use this. about using this is it's not uh, nice looking in a fine low because this doesn't match up but we can save quite some body count with that so i'm just gonna reuse that because this glass we can get rid of the thickness so we don't need it if you have something like this and you cannot select the whole edge one thing that you can do is select the loop then to edges, to edge parameter, deselect that one and then get rid of it. Delete that one, I think it's symmetrical. It was plenty. It's soft. Check out the high. The one thing that we can do is uh, we can just mesh conform. Maybe we can try uh, conforming it to this a little bit. I should conform. First, let's merge this together. Actually, let's uh, do it one by one. It's a different way of conforming to get a little bit more control. So use the model tools. It can be a little bit slow because we have quite a high poly count in our live one. But now we can just hold on shift. 
we can now snap that together. And I'm doing it like this because I want to ignore the outer edges. go in between my high and low, see if everything seems to be matching. I've got to mirror this one. Oh, before we mirror it, we already did the UVs actually. I think that pretty much finishes off the goggles. We'll need to do some test bags in a bit. But we have everything in place now. Density is looking good. That seems a little bit out of place. Check that out. The goggle one. Move that in place. Now we just need to mirror and fix the middle part. Because this should all be symmetrical. Get rid of all the colors. Pretty cool thing that I just realized, like uh, a week ago and actually changed the, the background color I never really knew how to do it but it's very easy Bam, can make it look a little bit nicer like that do like a new light having like a rim light can help as well So yeah, let's check for symmetry. Just copy, paste. Let's see. So yeah, it's pretty much symmetrical, except for this middle piece. For the rest, nothing really changes. A little bit in the surface detailing. So that means the only part that we need to worry about is change the topology quite a lot on this. Then we just need to kind of recheck how our polys fall on this. And this one we don't need to touch. So now we can take that middle piece, go front view, it can be 100%, it's on the center. Also this looks a little bit on the lower side. Maybe we can take that. Just do a quick baffle. And 
can edit edge flow. Just take some of that vesting away. A vesting just refers to being able to see a poly. So here we can still see it. I think I might do this one more time. It doesn't really matter what we do with it. We're not gonna be seeing it. That's gonna make the resolution a little bit nicer. Do need to match that up again. remember edit edge flow it is gonna change the position a little bit also this looks a little bit off now that i'm looking at it for the quattro being very slow let's disable history and delete all by history so that should fasten up the quattro being a little bit slow not sure why i think i just have too much stuff open let's try closing mama set I think the, the second mama set finish up saving and closing it's gonna be a bit faster. What I want to try is capture those shapes of the high, this fold right here on this edge. See mom set closed and still a little on the slow side but a lot better. Could also close ZBrush which is gonna help a lot. Just the more that you have open the more difficult time your computer is gonna have obviously. Recording also doesn't help by speeding up your computer. Maybe this needs a little bit more police as well but we can check that out later so we could go pretty extreme and add an edge there to capture that but i think there's plenty to remember it's also going to be covered with glass so let's just keep like this do a duplicate scale on X. Combine and merge all that stuff up. So we need to get history back. Just so we can put this as low as we can. It's only gonna merge overlapping vertices now. This looks a little bit strange. Ah, so that's the issue. Again, you can clearly see when you have an issue by smoothing it out. 
snap right now it's really strangely pointing and we get like an, uh, a pool so now you can see the difference we don't get that pool so you can see how easy it is to spot issues with that opposed to let's say when we have footage face it's supposed to be the, the mode that you debug in, but you can see here it looks perfect. You can only see it once we smooth it. So maybe I'm misinterpreting this mode. It isn't used for this, but when I learned it, they told me to use this to debug. It's basically been useless for the past six years that I've been using my yeah, good job, Maya. So let's see. Let's get a high back. Now we get a modeling toolkit. I think it's called modeling toolkit. Yeah, modeling toolkit. Oof. All right. Now we do the horrible job matching this up so actually the easiest way is to first disable life now we can just kind of push everything in place when we try to do this when we have a life which would make sense maybe like you want to match it so you have life on but then when we move something everything just kind of snaps and it's a pain so if you never tried it before first just disable life take a vertex and move that to the desired position. This is pretty much the workflow I follow anytime I need to match something. Just go with soft select with life disabled and match things up. It's gonna be super simple. Also, if you're getting like a bad selection with soft select, you're probably using the wrong mode. So go to fall off mode from volume. I think volume is the basic. You want to change that to surface. So now you see this is not being affected. You can do some pretty cool things. So right here, if you want to increase the size, but you don't like the fall off, you could mess with this to get a different effect. See how we can change the way that stuff's being affected. Now we can move it like that. But usually the, the standard works fine. And just mess with the size. You do that by holding down B, left mouse, and changing that. to do but try to power through it usually you want to be in component mode it's moved in the normal direction Now you see I don't want to affect that, so I'm just going to go out, soft select, move these by hand. So right here everything's becoming really close together. we're gonna need to merge some stuff up here just let's rematch this a little bit better so i think anything starting from this vertex we can just merge together so i'm gonna cut where i want to merge stuff together that's gonna be that edge. 
So here you can just select all that stuff. And I think it's about until there. So yeah, until here, I'd say. And I can hold on tap to quickly select more. Just gonna get rid of all that stuff. I think we do need to keep half of this polygon. So let's split it in two. So from here, I think we can merge it all together. Select a vertex or edge and focus. At this point we can go into life. Start to match this up a little bit better. I'm just kind of being little bit careful that I follow like the the feature of the edge so you can see this like on the edge of the ladder so do you want to be sure that on the other side this continues to be the edge of the ladder you can see now it's not too too difficult to get it on the edge. Now that we soft select and moved it in place already a little bit. So it's still looking a little bit complex on the other side. Let's first try to finish off the front. Usually stuff just kind of falls in place the more that you place right. So most times if the front works then you can kind of figure out the back. Hold on shift, smooth. You can also use that to snap. So here I'm just smoothing it out but I'm actually using it as a snap. Just shift clicking, it's gonna snap all those fields into place. It's like the mesh conform thingy that we did earlier when we went to mesh and conform, but only for the selected fields. So now that everything kind of is into place, we can start figuring out the back. Take a look at that edge. One important thing is that I try to keep the symmetry as even as possible. It's just for consistency sake of the model. You don't want the other side to be very different. It's not gonna look professional at all. So here we made like a little error in the height. Here we matched up nicely, but here we have too much depth. But again, it's okay, it's just uh, the back. So I'm not going to change it. This should have been like the other side. Because now you can see the, the height is going to be a little bit more challenging. Because we have this whole mismatch volume. You can already see here how I'm struggling to get that right now. Thick. Just 
be sure I'm just gonna read this made this so let's put this in Maya yeah I guess that's correct just making sure since I did this project quite a while ago so I don't remember everything anymore. So we can just do something like that. So just by slightly moving all these things just gonna snap it together again just like when we shift click so when we shift click it's also gonna smooth it out a little bit so I'm just taking a face and moving it Now I'm moving the, the face instead of the vertex because right now only one component gets snapped but if I do the face four components get snapped all the vertexes vertices so you can do edge by edge to get a little bit more control then readjust the vertex a little bit accordingly matching so you kind of want to view it from multiple angles because sometimes it works from one angle and then you see how mismatched it is from a different angle again from this angle it looks fine from here we can clearly see that it's not fine That's like the pain of 3D, right? Opposed to 2D. Everything needs to work from every single angle. We don't need to be too, too precise with the back because that's not something that you can see. I am going to triangulate this by hand to capture that shape a little bit better. So I'm going to put an extra one right there. Again, sometimes adding one or two more polys is really worth capturing that shape better. So nowadays two or three more polys is nothing, even if we do it a hundred times. going off with shift to make sure a third is snapping so maybe we missed some from certain angles but if we snap them they will be forced to be correct then over here I want to move my verts in a very specific way I'm trying to line my grid up like here something like this so now to capture that fold we can just triangulate it to capture the fold shape so that's kind of what I'm thinking right now in my head 
now we can just take our cut tool and cut that fold in. That's the beautiful thing of hand triangulating stuff. It takes time, but you can really capture the shape of your high poly this way. I think this is uh, a very important step that most beginners skip is the triangulating stuff. Because it's true that your normal map can fix stuff like this. It's just gonna lack that that's nice depth in the actual model itself. I'm gonna connect this all up. Again, here we gotta start matching this up actually a bit and then do the triangulation. So I do still wanna follow the feature lines. This feature is like from the, the back the ladder here. So I want to be sure that I continue that feature on the same edge. That's going to give our model that nice consistency in our retop, which is going to make it look very clean. Right here, I'm following that feature. So I'm gonna triangulate this. Then get rid of this one to change the edge flow. Just by giving this extra attention to a model, I'm gonna make it look very polished. Of course, if you're doing like a professional project, you can skip the, these little steps if you're on a very tight budget and time. But if quality is super important, definitely don't skip out on this. It's also gonna help the shading to be a little bit better. because this is going to be a non-deforming mesh doesn't matter how many triangles we put in the only thing that we have to care about is following our features and the shading and the poly count of course that's very obvious using soft select Let's just snap this all in place to match those little micro adjustments that we did in zbrush don't want to adjust the edge there just on the left like see how this can look pretty Intimidating, all these mismatching polys. We just take it poly by poly and figure out which feature it's supposed to follow. Trying to merge those. We 
we can merge those together because right here we have like a little thingy that goes off but here we don't so we don't need all that resolution don't like how we don't catch this well just gonna place that like that then cut that in again here i want to be pretty careful to really catch the shape is this around the eyes and this is going to be a focal point of our renders Focal point just means the, the point that you're mostly focused on and looking at. Just pay a little bit more attention to this. So be sure that the triangulation is right so it follows the roundness of the shape. Then be sure you don't have any weird stuff sticking out. triangulation by hand to make it right see that matches pretty well put this in the low group Again, using this plugin is very useful. We can really toggle between the high and the low. See if we're capturing the shapes well enough. Here you can already see the advantage of following that feature line. Here you can already kind of see the, the high come through and just the low poly without a bake. Let's soft this out. Which stick do we have? Hot edges. Soft. See that faults already starting to take shape in the low, which is great. But we're not there yet. Again, if you're on a tight budget, I think uh, your low like this is fine. But if you want to spend that extra time to really get the quality up, spend a little bit more time matching your shapes and volumes. Most people also have uh, a big hate towards doing low polys, so they try to get the stage done as fast as they can. So by you spending a little bit more time on it, you can separate your art piece from the rest, giving it that extra polished look. trying to now make the low process as easy as I can with the plugin that I'm using right here. I don't think it's gonna be done yet when I upload this course. Just keep an eye out for my page and once it's done you'll see it pop up and I'll make a video about it. Also if you have any ideas for it just let me know in the comments. I read and reply to almost all and I'll see if I can interpret your ID.
I'm just trying to capture these spaces, which can be a little bit of a pain. So here we don't follow our other side. So here it's single, and here we're putting a baffle. Not sure where that changes. So about here. So let's try to follow that. Then later if we want we can put a baffle on both sides. So stuff like this, this depth, it's really nice to just capture it in your low poly, opposed to just faking it from the normal map only. Turn that off. I feel it's getting a little bit slow on me. See how I'm pushing these faces so I can line that triangle up right there. This lines up nice now. Soft this out. So we do still need to be careful with our poly count. We can just keep adding triangles everywhere to catch the shape. Still needs to be somewhat low poly. Again, for this project, I'm not too worried about poly count. Just want to get a really nice render going. Here, I really want to be sure that I follow that fold. So it's changing the volume with a lot, and it's right in the middle of our mask. It's going to be a very big point to focus on. Like something weird going on there. Shoot that an extra. Actually, we can just switch that triangle. Mm. Okay, we need a little bit more. You see me switch all the time to this mode, so just take a vertex and push it out will stick to the inside of the surface very often. Capture that roundness. Then now here just switch the triangulation.
probably split up. Catch the volume a little bit better here. I think it's about time we make a new safe as well. Also working on a plugin to make that a little bit more organized. So lots of cool stuff coming out soon. And we got some issues still there. A little end gone right there. See, I'm really spending the time just matching all that volume by triangulating it by hand. Let's go quickly see how it's looking. See, that's looking pretty nice, really capturing that fold. So you can see there's not too much of a difference in volume. Which is exactly what we want from the low. Seems to be pushed out a little bit. Something here. So you can really see the, the usefulness of this plugin. Now we can really check out how the, the high is matching up to the low shape. Before it was dipping and we didn't notice until we switched a few times between the views and we can see that we're missing something. Same here. When I look here and I toggle it, you can see it's a little bit off. So then we can go to there. Just spend some time fixing that up. Now if we take a look again, see now we're capturing that way better, the feature right there. So I noticed a little mistake here, so let's fix that, turn on symmetry, so we fix it at both sides, it's gonna turn off that. if this is gonna be perfect it's a small detail so we can get away with it not matching exactly also want to rephrase something really quick the models that we're making are pretty high in polycount like if you were making this for a game this will be more of a, a cinematic model they use in the cinematics. The actual polygon would probably be more like like that. Something more similar. Like this. You catch this shape. Probably wouldn't catch that one. Probably wouldn't catch that one. Take a little bit of polygon. You would catch this. This you can probably leave out completely safe on the poly count <coughs> so again uh, poly count is very depending on the purpose of your project for me i want to go more for a nice render so we can go with a uh, more cinematic poly count 
But if this was just for in-game purpose, you'd probably still want to go a little bit lower than what we have here. And go a little bit more like that. Let's go ahead and spend some time fixing this up. These are really the, the parts that make me hate retopology. So you gotta get really close and everything just kind of snaps in the wrong way. You gotta push all these vertices out. So from here on, let's just merge that together. Usually I wouldn't capture a stitch like this. It's just to give a little bit of an uh, a depth between the transition that we that we merge them. trick we don't always have to view a height sometimes it's a lot more simple if we just view the low poly then we fill in the places accordingly to what looks like makes sense and then we can readjust a little bit Now it makes sense to just take these and bridge them together. So this can simplify merging pieces together a little bit. So I guess we can get rid of that one. It's way too deep.
think it makes sense to merge this together. Put a triangle. Again, I'm capturing that stitch. Just to give a little bit depth to that transition where we merge things together. It will make a little bit more sense when we bake it. Just to kind of hide the, the messy look that we're going to get by merging this all together. I think right now we're at a pretty good stage and we can start doing our first test bake soon. Just triangulate a little bit by hand here. Capture the direction of those folds. Let's go ahead and do our first test bake. Um, it's named wrong, it should be low. So if you have that temp that won't go away, go to namespace editor and delete all the namespaces. Now that's fixed. So yeah, let's take a look how our UVs look. They're probably gonna be a little messed up after adjusting so many things. The first thing that we want to do is take the middle edge. Just move and see all that. Some stuff that broke here, move and see. Just pressing G to repeat. So now to fix this mess, just go to face. Let's try UV. We can just start moving things out. So then we can start off with this. Let's take a look. Let's map. Some non manifold edges. We can retake all this stuff, plane the mapping. Let's see where the other one is. Uh, so this all merged up, which is fine. Do a cut. That's looking correct. Got all the backside. Now let's just take all of this. So let's just take all this now, play in the map. So now we have three pieces and we can unfold this. Got a few issues going on. Just so we got like a really small thingy here. I think this might be an issue in topology, yes. So you can see by doing UVs you can catch some of that stuff. Then this won't unfold. And ah, now it's working. It's a little piece of strong and off. Take a look here. Again, can 
really troubleshoot your mesh by just using the UVs. And let's soft the show out. Do the same for the Google 2 group. Layout. Now let's lay them all out together. Like we're doing with the, the helmet. So now we can export them all. Gonna need to make a new script. Not sure where my old ones went. So again, the idea is very simple. We have two baking groups. So we open up the script editor. Google one, export. This one should be Google one. Mission series off. right next to helmet if you want to clean this code up a little bit you can take these results and just delete them and these warnings so in total you could do this editing this can be a little bit challenging if you want to be very nice and easy just open up a text editor like sublime paste it so now for here you can take the result everything with these two slashes you can just get rid of it so now we just say select this google group and export it and then select the next google group and export it so if we paste this it's going to be a little bit less text and still gonna do the same. Just also do one of those to clear the selection. We'll save that preferences. Actually let's name this. So now Google see nothing seems to happen but it's just exporting So now we're in Marmoset. Let's take a look. We already set this up earlier. Let's bake. And hit preview. That all looks pretty good. So just change this camera field a few a little bit. Be something a little bit nicer. And we can also mess with render settings. This is just if you want to do the preview on Mama set to get a little bit of a nice uh, image. But for this course, we do all our preview in Maya as it's much nicer. This is all looking pretty good. It's mismatching a little bit the feature. I don't think I'm gonna be worried about it. You can't really tell unless you zoom into here. And uh, for these renders, we're never gonna be more zoomed in than this, I assume. That's kind of how you can weigh in what spent time fixing stuff, but to just leave certain issues in the, the render distance. Like right here, we have a little issue. Are you gonna see it? No, because this is gonna be the closest that we render from. So we can ignore it. Of course, if you want to be really perfect, fix it. But this should be like your main comparison, switching between the, the high and the low, seeing if there's a big difference. So the first thing I can tell is the over here, this full, it's very mismatching. 
steps because we're not matching the geometry enough. So it's like a good way to kind of troubleshoot your bake, switching between the two. So I'm not sure if this one yeah, that doesn't have the bake applied. Let's take this group. Goggles. I feel like that's just making it worse here. Yeah. So yeah, this should be your main way of kind of dealing with checking bakes, switching between your high and low. Just kind of where you kind of seeing where you have issues pop up that are different. There's a very obvious issue right here. Again, uh, we can recognize this issue. We had it on the, the helmet before. It's an issue of not having UVs. right here Just for a generic game asset, it's pretty overkill. Splitting up vertices like this to capture that. But for the purpose of this project, we have to do it. But again, everything you're learning right here, it applies to making normal resolution meshes as well. It's mostly because nowadays uh, there's so much art being posted everywhere to kind of make your mesh stand out. It needs to have a little bit more resolution. But you should still follow all the, the principles of game meshes, of course. So now let's check that out. Again, we use our export script. We're gonna make these export scripts all automatic with the plugin. So that's gonna be pretty nice in the future. But for now, we, I'm editing, adding them by hand. So we can still see that we have a little bit of an issue going on. I think it's just have to push this one a little bit more down. Mm. Let's go ahead and triangulate that better. You could also fix this issue by painting off the, the offset, but that's like a, a dirty fix. Like at this point, if it's not uh, baking well, it just means that it's not close enough to the mesh. So let's try it like this. So 
something popped right there so i think we fixed it yeah you can see that's a little bit better go ahead and just optimize this and then i think it will bake down really nice So yeah, it's a nice looking bake now. So now you see, we don't get that much of a difference anymore. A little bit of an error here. This is just a projection error. So the way you fix projection errors is go to mom set the right here paint offset just gonna show you once because it's important it's gonna be like the next step we can paint this all away and now when we bake See that cleans it up a little bit more because the, the preview bakes low resolution. Then now if we go to Maya, you see that looks perfect. That's like the step once we finish laying out the final UVs. So you don't want to worry about it for now. But I'm just letting you know that we have to do that. So you don't see areas like this and think, hey, this looks bad. Why don't we fix that? But we did fix this it's because the fixes are different here it's a fix for a topology and here it's a projection fix See, i'm not really liking how those bake down Again, this also really depends on how much resolution you can add to your project. One thing that you could do, like uh, if you don't have the resolution, you can try selecting every other edge and collapsing that. That can lower it a little bit while averaging out the resolution this I'm not gonna worry about it see how we really keep switching between the two so that's why export scripts are so important so you don't waste a lot of time I think that looks a lot better now. Way close to the high. So I don't see too many errors. This is gonna need some uh, work in mom set. look at the area where we merge it I think that looks fine Should probably triangulate this that will do it to make this a little bit less extreme Don't want to capture the stitches too much just for consistency sake. 
Because if we do it for one, we should be doing it for all. Otherwise, it's not going to be consistent. So it's better to capture not a single one than just to capture one. Except for here, it's an exception to kind of hide uh, the merge. very important don't get lazy on fixing the high doing the high poly and low poly should be a very dynamic process switching all the time between different software they gotta adjust a little bit the mom set just a little bit in ZBrush and so on. It's not like, hey, the high is finished. Now I don't need to worry about it anymore. Constantly have to switch to fix little issues. stuff as well to export with poly paint so now that's looking better first was sticking up now it looks normal you see that we're still quite mismatching here though so be careful about check it out in my I feel like we're matching up pretty close hmm that looks like a thing that we're matching up close enough Let's see how this here breaks down now. You can see that looks a lot better. First was just looking like a stretch error on the EVs. Now it's looking nice. So again, before this looks hot. Now after it looks way more normal. So if you have an error, always try to identify why you have the error, it's the UVs, the topology, you have to paint the skewing, you have to paint the offset, you have to change the high, and try to fix the right issue. Which can be a little bit difficult, but again, the, the more times you do it, at some point you just kind of know what's wrong. But it's very important to identify what's going wrong. And to fix that, 
pick and learn for the next time when you have a similar issue pop up that you like, ah, this is happening because blah blah. For example, with the, with the glasses earlier, because we made that mistake earlier, could really quickly identify, ah, uh, we don't have UVs. That's why it's looking like that. for game meshes but for a very nice render why not it's like uh, one way how you can keep your personal projects being fun you don't give yourself all the restrictions that you have at work with having to make meshes super low poly Let's spend some right now. If I look at this, if I look at the bake, I would say we don't have any more issues. Everything is looking good to me. That's the point where you want to go into here again and then really check the topology and try to find any issues. In the bake, it looks fine. If I look at it like this, I see an example, uh, opportunity, I mean, to add a little bit more poly count, to capture a little bit more depth. But at this point you could call it done when you don't have any big issues pop up like that. is just going to be bringing that extra polish. Probably going to do the same that we did with the stuff under. It's getting too complex. Take it. And delete it. Best way to deal with complicated issues like that is to get rid of the issue by deleting the topology. First, we capture this very simplified. Let's check out the UVs. Again, I spot that because when we did soft edge, we still had a hard edge there, which obviously meant that something was wrong. So now we can just view it again. Now we can cut in some more detail if we want and replace some stuff. I 
think that they don't like this fine. We want we could put like an uh, extra edge hit but all that it's just gonna be extra work i think the shading's already working fine without that it's a little bit better here than here mm, actually let's put it in do like what it's adding Most cases, kind of overkill. Ah, shit. Right here we have another one. So we need to merge up. Let's triangulate that one. Now you see why it's important to, to even if the bag looks clean, kind of go over your high poly and low poly and check it again to do the final tweaks, just to make the mesh a little bit better. But again, if you have clean bag, you can just ignore it if you want to save some time. Because in the end, that's all that matters. Gonna baffle that one out as well. Let's see where did we do that? Think about that. Let's just do that up until there. being a little bit slow. I think it's because I'm recording, I see brush open and mama set open. like this the shading that makes it look a little bit more nice and hot instead of that roundness that we had before so let's go ahead and just take a quick look how that's gonna look with the bake it's gonna look amazing so when this happens, not sure why it does, just re-export and rebake. And if that doesn't fix it, just close and open your mom set again. 
So now, after we reopened, let's bake again. And still not going away. Just quickly try to troubleshoot this. I think it's just a case of reopening and reclosing. That might have messed the UVs up. Yep. Got this big wrong UV right here. Yeah. Like this one. Just like that. It's being a little painful. So we can just go this down. about the uh, transition here and check that out so yeah that looks about right maybe I want to capture this volume a little bit Just checking your low and really matching those volumes all the time. It can be a little bit boring, but it's okay. Again, I fix one issue and I rebake and just go one step at a time. Just really focusing on the issue. look if we capture all these volumes well here which we do stitches are looking a little bit strange right here but again this is uh, something that we have to fix in mom set we go here to the low paint skewing instead of offset right now we cannot do this where the the UVs are split and have a hard edge, then you're gonna get artifacts. But right here we don't split them at all, so we can just go like that. Actually maybe that doesn't work. Uh, let's see. Hmm, I thought I would fix it. I think that's not working because we did add some depth to the stitch right here. It's not a problem uh, if we still have them in the final bake. We can just take these vertexes and just move them out a little bit to counter that. It's a little error of projection. I think everything's looking good. 